Hi everyone, my name is Morgan. In today's lesson, you will learn 13 phrases that native speakers actually use. Let's get started. Instead of saying, be alert, a native speaker will say, keep your eyes peeled, right? That means you need to be on the alert. You need to pay attention very carefully. For example, when I'm driving to Pennsylvania to visit my family, I always have to keep my eyes peeled on the road so a deer doesn't come out and hit my car, all right? So keep your eyes peeled means to be alert and to pay attention. All right, our second phrase. I cringe when I see people walking in their house with their shoes on. I cringe. This means I feel awkward or embarrassed because of what someone else is doing. I cringe when I hear people chewing with their mouth open. Okay, it is not a comfortable feeling. We can use it as I cringe or something is cringy. Cringy is the adjective form. When we feel uncomfortable or awkward, in a social situation. Cringe. What makes you cringe? Let me know in the comments. I know I met that woman somewhere, but I can't put my finger on it. Our third expression is can't put your finger on something. It is not literally putting your finger on something. This means you don't know how to explain something exactly. You are not 100% sure. For example, I was doing my homework. I'm sure this question is not correct, but I can't put my finger on what is wrong. Okay, so we cannot exactly pinpoint the problem or we can't recognize something we should already know, right? I can't put my finger on it you can also say. All right, for our fourth expression, we can use this question when we want to make a polite suggestion. For example, if my daughter is on the playground and I want her to share, instead of saying, share your truck with the other boy, I can say, why don't you share your truck? This is a less direct way of making a suggestion, okay? Why don't you? Or if you're at work and you sent someone an email, but they're sure they have not received it, you can say, why don't you check your email again? I'm sure I sent it five minutes ago, okay? This can be used in many situations to make a polite suggestion or recommendation. Why don't you, followed by your suggestion. Try it out. What do you say when you don't have a lot of time? You can say the clock is ticking. Tick, tick, tick. We use this expression when a situation is very time sensitive. We need to do something quickly or very soon before we run out of time. For example, you can say, the clock is ticking for me to buy a house next year. The clock is ticking for me to make that plane reservation. Or the clock is ticking. You got to book that hotel before all the rooms get sold out. The clock is ticking. Instead of saying, can I use your pen? You can say, do you mind if I use your pen? When we make requests in English, it's best to do them indirectly, okay? So instead of saying, can I use your restroom? You can say, do you mind if I use your restroom? Do you mind if I, followed by the verb in the base form, okay? We don't change the verb. Do you mind if I have a piece of paper from your notebook? Do you mind if I take this call? 
okay? You can try it out. The next time you need to ask someone for something. We all know there are good things and bad things about, say, having a dog as a pet. When you want to talk about the good and the bad aspects of something, you can say the downside of, for example, the downside of having a dog is that we can't travel freely. Or the downside of owning a home is that we have to pay for all the repairs ourselves. Or the downside of having a part-time job is that you don't get health insurance. So when you want to talk about the negative or bad parts of something, you can say the downside. The downside of A is B. What do you say when you have too much of something? You can say, I'm up to my ears in something. For example, I took out student loans to go to college and now I'm up to my ears in student loan debt. Or we bought a fixer upper and now we're up to our ears with repairs. A fixer upper is a house that you need to do a lot of work on to make it livable. So the next time you want to say you have too much of something, you can say, I'm up to my ears in debt. I'm up to my ears in homework, English homework, okay? I'm up to my ears. It was such a waste of time to go to the store today. I should have just ordered it on Amazon. When you want to say that an activity is not a good use of your time, you can say it's a waste of time. For example, it's a waste of time to go to the library when I can download an ebook on my phone. Or maybe your parent tells you playing video games is a waste of time. You should spend it studying. So things that are not good use of your time is a waste of time. And all of those words go together. Don't separate them. A waste of time. When I walk into a store with my daughter, she always makes a beeline for the stand of balloons that's by the produce. Make a beeline means you walk directly to something because you have a purpose and you really want to see it or you really want to do it. So make a bee line, okay? When my daughter sees the balloons in the store, she makes a bee line for it. Or when I go to the library, I make a bee line for the mystery section because I love mystery novels, okay? When you want to say that someone walks directly towards somewhere with a purpose, you can say, Make a bee line. You can also use it in the past. I made a bee line to the cake at the grocery store. Have you ever had a falling out with someone in your family or one of your friends? A falling out is an expression we use when we say that we do not talk to a person anymore. That can be your friend, it can be a family member. There is usually some problem or conflict or you fight or argue and then you do not talk anymore. You don't contact each other anymore. This is called a falling out. To have a falling out. For example, my sister and I had a falling out after she wrecked my car. We had a very bad fight. And we had a falling out. This means we don't have a relationship anymore. We're not on good terms, right? We don't talk anymore. Have you ever had a falling out with one of your friends? Before we continue to number 12, please take a moment to like this video and hit subscribe. All right, our 12th expression 
is what you can use when you want to pay for someone else. If you go to a cafe and you want to pay for your friend's drink, you can say, it's on me. It's on me. And your friend will know that you want to pay for their drink. If you go to a restaurant and you get the check and your friend is getting her card out of her wallet, you can say, don't worry, it's on me. And if you are at a restaurant and the restaurant gives you something for free, that's called on the house. You get some cake delivered to your table and the waiter says, oh, it's on the house. It's on the house. This means the restaurant is giving it to you for free. I almost didn't have it in me to film this video after watching my kids all day long, but here I am. This expression is, I didn't have it in me to do something. This means it was difficult to find the energy or the motivation to do something. Or another example, I was going to work out today, but I didn't have it in me. This means I did not have the energy to exercise today. Okay, This is an awesome phrase to use when you want to say you just couldn't do it. Okay. I didn't have it in me, followed by the verb. I didn't have it in me to call my grandma. I didn't have it in me to make dinner, so I got takeout, right? There you have it. Those are your 13 expressions that all native speakers use. Thank you for joining me today and happy learning. See you in my next video.